Hey everybody, welcome to This Is Tuesday, right? Yeah, I'm wearing the same shirt from yesterday. I only wore it for two hours yesterday, so I figure it was okay. It's like the five second rule of clothes. But I am really tired today. I'm not gonna get into the reasons why, but I was like, roller shade eyes last night. Something had caffeine in it that I didn't know about. Um, but if you're wondering why I have more of a golden glow today, it's because of what's on my screen. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I will get that to this in a minute, but if you like this sort of content, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Lana K. Did you see that lag on the button press? Everything's in slow motion. <sighs> the button press. God. Okay. I have to do a bit of cleanup on my video yesterday. This is what happens with breaking news. Vroom. Uh, <laughs> uh, when stories move quickly, things change. Information um, becomes available. I made a comment in yesterday's video that um, the reviews missed the, the copious bugs. Now, I came upon some information today that suggests the reviews didn't miss the bugs. They weren't allowed to show the bugs based on NDAs. Now, I have not been able to confirm that from a secondary source. I have been able to confirm that uh, you were not allowed to use your own video capture likely because if it's anything like my video capture, it looked like shite. You had to use the B-roll in your reviews. That's the only thing I've been able to independently confirm. And I'm not one of those people that reports things as fact on a single source. Um, but we have to roll back this story. Uh, and I'm just going to use the various things I put up on my Twitter feed yesterday. Because it's a good way to track it. All right. Some of you may remember a video I did a while back where I thought a pre-Cyberpunk release when, when they had to push the game, uh, I thought it was a good apology and I gave CD Projekt Red credit at that time. They put out another apology and this only gets like one out of five Canada's in terms of apology. It ain't good because it buries the freaking lead. You know, rule, well, rule number one of my apologies, well, it's the Cliff Steele from Doom Patrol version of apologies. Apologies must contain three basic points. This is a paraphrase. I'm stupid, I fucked up, and I'm sorry, okay? This, hear me out, okay? It's gonna be a bit screamy, but I framed this the best I could. Okay, here we go. So, dear gamers, first of all, we would like to start by apologizing to you for not showing the game on base last gen consoles before it premiered and in consequence, not allowing you to make a more informed decision about your purchase. We should have paid more attention to making it play better on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. All right, that's the problem I have, but I'll read the rest, fair comment. Second, we will fix bugs and crashes and improve the overall experience. The first round of updates has just been released and the next one is coming within the next seven days. Expect more as we will frequently up we will update frequently whenever new improvements are ready. After the holidays, we'll continue working. We'll release two large patches starting with patch one in January. This will be followed by patch two in February. Together, these should fix the most prominent problems gamers are facing on last gen consoles. We will be informing you about the contents of each patch ahead of their release. They won't make the game on last gen look like it's running on a high spec PC or next gen console, but it will be closer to that experience than it is now. Finally, we would like, we would always like everyone who buys our games to be satisfied with their purchase. We would appreciate it if you would give us a chance, but if you are not pleased with the game on your console and don't want to wait for updates, you can opt to refund your copy. For copies purchased digitally, please use the refund system of PSN or Xbox respectively. I have some reporting on that. Um, for boxed versions, please first try to get a refund at the store where you bought the game. Should this not be possible, please contact us at 
help me refund at cdprojectred.com and we will do our best to help you. Starting from today, you can contact us for up to a week <laughs> until December 21st, 2020. P.S. PC gamers will also be getting regular updates and fixes improving the game. Why the hell did they have to say that last part? I don't know. Um, but okay. Let's let's start with the reporting. I said, okay. I've talked to three people today, all of whom attempted to get refunds from PlayStation. Obviously, CDPR did not talk to Sony before they said, contact Sony or Xbox to get refund, you know, because <coughs> Sony's like, no, you downloaded the game because of our refund policy. We can't refund your purchase now. I guess that's because, you know, once it's on your console, it's on your console. I don't know, but CD Projekt Red is telling people to do something, at least on PlayStation, the players cannot do. But because they're saying do this first, everybody has to jump through these hoops today before they can get a refund from CD Projekt Red. Oh, those poor customer service people at Sony. Uh, at PlayStation, yikes. Um, they really should have thought that through before they offloaded their screw up onto somebody else's like technical, uh, like support department. That's not cool. Um, and as somebody who has used uh, Sony's refund service in the past, I've had very good experiences with them. They are not unreasonable. Um, they check to see whether you frequently ask for a refund. They flat out told me, you know, there's no record on your account of, of any sort of habit of this. So, you know, we're going to refund the game. Um, and it was a downloadable version of, uh, one of the Uncharted games because it was too big for even a totally empty, uh, PS3 hard drive. Yeah, that's right. So they refunded the game because I didn't download it. I couldn't download it. It was too damn big. And I think that might actually be some of my problems with with Cyberpunk, actually. I've been doing some troubleshooting on my copy of the game, and it put so much data on my PC, it was eating up like 164 gigs of space on my PC. I had to do a big PC cleaning because I don't have a million other things to do. But it's running a bit better now that there's more space. I guess this just wasn't um, enough space on the caches for things to to run properly, which makes sense. It, I discovered it because my Adobe After the After Effects started going, "I'm gonna barf." No, it didn't actually say this. Is there enough? There is not enough allotted cache space. But wouldn't it be funny if a computer program went, "I'm gonna barf" when there wasn't enough disk space? I don't know. Just my world. Okay, so what's wrong with this apology? The I fucked up part was lacking. And only half marks for the we're stupid part, okay? They did, they know they did a bad. They know they did a doo-doo, right? They're not correctly identifying just what the mistake was. <laughs> and they know better, okay? This is not... This is not a conscientious apology. This is not a mea culpa. Okay, let me read. Awkward sentences are the banes of apology. That's why the Cliff Steele's rule works. They are simple sentences. I'm stupid. I fucked up. I'm sorry. No debate there. Compare that to this. Slow on the uptake again. We would like to start by apologizing to you for not showing the game on base last-gen consoles before it premiered. Not showing the game on base last-gen consoles before it premiered. Nobody gives a shit that they weren't shown the game. They care that the game is broken. And I apologize for yelling, but that deserved it, okay? It's not that they didn't show the game. They didn't show the game because the game is borked. On PS4, the graphics revolution resolution, I mean, okay, Witcher games got a downgrade from what they showed. 
you know, even, you know, the original Watch Dogs downgrade, though, everybody saw that coming. This? People didn't have faces at times. Like, it was, it was some horror movie level shite. So, going on. Uh, so, it's not that you didn't show the game. In consequence, <laughs> you notice it's like the, the distancing language, not we fucked up. It's in consequence. Oopsie, something just happened. We had nothing to do with that. Not allowing you, you phrase, not I phrase. Oh, God. In consequence, not allowing you to make a more informed decision about your purchase. And then the coup de grace. We should have paid more attention to making it play better on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. See, in proper, I'm stupid, I fucked up, I'm sorry rule, it would be, we're stupid. This game is broken on PS4 and Xbox One. We're sorry. This should have been one line. We fucked up. This game ain't good on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. That's what they should have said. Not, we didn't show it. In consequence, whoops, you couldn't make an informed decision. The decisions, we're apologizing for your decision. You know, we are apologizing for not showing the game. Not shipping a broken game. That's some bullshit. You know, when they apologize for crunch, it's, we're sorry, this, you know... We don't feel like we have any other choice. Now we know why we didn't think they have any other choice. If this is what this game looks like, after what, two, three months of crunch? What the fuck did it look like before? Why were they even considering shipping this game now? Now, the we should have paid more attention to making it play better on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Yes, factual statement. But why am I like... That's, that's the worst stupid part of it why because <sighs> the playstation 5 has been out for what five seconds that that's an exaggeration but a lot of people who want the playstation 5 can't get the playstation 5 and i don't know about the xbox whatever the fuck it's called um but the <laughs> install base for next gen consoles are teeny the install base for, I'm still going to call it current gen consoles because this, the Xbox One and the PS4 are the game system that the bulk of play console players are going to be using, period, end of freaking story. Yes, you should have paid more attention to making it play better on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. The obviousness of this is offensive. What I want to know is why they didn't. I would like some information because I want to be able to judge whether this is a one-time thing and they've learned from it or whether we can expect this to happen in future games. And yes, my mug does say, beneath this grumpy exterior beats the heart of a dashing hero. Hero being a gender neutral term. I am grumpy about this. So, but... The, the plot thickens, okay? The plot thickens. That, 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 I, this is not good enough for me. The last one was, this is not good enough for me. Because it, there's a, there's, there's distancing language. The, in consequence, I, I think I've made my point. Distancing language is, is the bane of apologies. The not allowing you to make a more informed decision is, sorry you misunderstood. No, bad, do not. No, 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 no. You never um, include the word you as a subject in an apology. It always has to be an object. I'm sorry I hurt you. Not I'm sorry you. Eh, no. 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 Apologies are about what the apologizer did. Not what the person you're apologizing to did. These are basics. Okay? So, but the plot thickens. And give me a second to, uh, the next thing that came up is a, is a, uh, uh, another person on Twitter, another Twitter user said, how did it even get through the certification process if it's that broken on older versions of consoles? Yes. How does 
a game gets certified on PS4 and Xbox One this broken. Because game companies, because of day one patches, take console companies at their word that they're going to fix it. They're going to fix the problems with the day one patch. I don't think they should, the, the console companies should be releasing these games until they have a patch that works. It doesn't have to be on the box copy. Like, go ahead and produce the games and ship them so they can release as soon as possible. But don't release the game until you know it's not broken. These down-to-the-wire release, like, just-in-time release shites. I get why they do it. Because if they're just sitting in stores, employees steal the game. And then leaked footage ends up on the internet. I'm not kidding. This is this is what happened. I unfortunately know some people who did it, who worked at um, uh, a store that rhymes with frest fry. Uh, it's a firing offense if you get caught. Uh, but fair point. And then, you know, you step out because I do the journalism. You step out bigger picture reporting. I said, is there a triple A franchise with huge media push that wasn't broken this holiday? Because Legion had problems. I'm getting mixed reports on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, uh, some people it ran great for, other people experienced frequent crashes. Um, uh, apparently even Spider-Man Miles Morales had some bug issues, though I haven't heard too, too many people howling about that. Um, the the level of bugs seems to be a problem here, but I think that's just because of the focus on the game. So is this something only Cyberpunk did this holiday? No, this seems to be an issue plaguing every game release this holiday for one extent to another. The question is why? Well, that usually means the developers were um, favoring the next gen, the PS5, Xbox, whatever they're calling their series, uh, next next console, uh, Xbox Series X, is that what they're still calling? Too many X's, too many X's. It goes XXX, I'm like, well, I'm confused. Um, but, um, you know, <coughs> two main reasons something like this happens. One, financial incentives, which means they got more money for developing next gen than they did on current gen. Uh, second, thing is they wanted to play with new toys and don't underestimate the pull the siren call of techie minded people wanting to play with new toys i'm bad for this as well i have to beat this instinct down professionally quite a bit because that way lies madness when you're on a deadline It has been a very robust series of launch titles for the next-gen systems. That would be good if it didn't make the user experience suffer for the current gen. They've learned from the PS4, Xbox One launch in, you know, games like Assassin's Creed Rogue got lost because all the focus was on Assassin's Creed Unity, which was the next gen title. Now, last time there weren't the same shortages, the same holiday shortages as the PS5 is this time. But, you know, Unity got all the focus because it was buggy. Um, but Rogue got lost it got forgotten and to me rogue was a really good game it, because it rounded out the uh you know the kenway atawale thing and handed things off to unity and i don't know why they haven't released these games as a two-pack because they they do play together um but instead of putting out games that were sort of exclusive next gen they're, they're trying to straddle this and, and, you know, quite frankly, you either sacrifice the quality of your next gen version, because th this is a meaningful leap. It's not just improved graphics, it's speed of load times and things like that. Um, you either have crazy long load times and other performance issues on your current gen, 
or you release a next gen ish game on on the PS5 Xbox Series X. It seems like everybody chose to create performance problems on the PS4 and Xbox Series and Xbox One. It's a Kobayashi Maru, but I don't agree with it just because to me, one of the rules of game dev is if you have to pick how you're going to fail, you create the best experience for the largest number of people. And in that case, the decision is um, current gen. Unless you're getting a huge amount of money to make next gen. And I go back to that theory. But let's continue because the story goes on. Um, I uh, talk a bit. Um, this, this, is, this is the one where I'm like, Re! stop, what? Steve Tassi wrote a piece for Forbes, and I won't read the whole thing. I'm just crediting the source because, you know, this this is the thing I said I wasn't, I couldn't confirm. I could confirm a piece of this. I could not confirm the whole thing. But Steve, I don't agree with his opinions all the, sorry, Paul Tassi, Paul Tassi. Um, I know somebody else named Steve Tassi. Paul Tassi. Um, I, I don't, um agree with his opinions all of the time, but he seems to be fairly solid in terms of facts. Um, and he made this rather shocking claim. It goes deeper than this, however. CDPR purposefully hid the state Cyberpunk was in on all consoles by not giving reviewers anything but PC review codes and making them sign ironclad NDAs where they couldn't talk about any bugs they were experiencing at all until the embargo was up. And even then, they were not allowed to show footage of their own gameplay until after those reviews went up. So he's not quite saying that they weren't allowed to talk about bugs in their reviews. It says... Couldn't talk about any bugs they were experiencing at all until the embargo was up. The embargo period for the reviews or there's a, an embargo period about talking about bugs. Either way, kind of suspect. But not being able to show footage of their own gameplay until after the reviews went up. Apparently it's a week. Um, the reviews uh, for, for the... Um, for the the reporter for the reviewers who refused to sign the NDA, and apparently some people did, they were delayed a week, and that's why there were so few reviews at launch. I give credit to the reviewers that did not sign that NDA. Good for you. I would like to see more reporting on this NDA. I would like to see the actual language in this NDA. I don't know if you're not allowed to show the NDA because that's covered by the NDA. But I, I will not flat out say that, well, th this is a level of duplicitous. The reason you don't allow people to use their own gameplay viz is because it's not going to capture very well. And I have found that when I'm trying to capture cyberpunk vi viz, it looks like crap. When I was streaming on Twitch, I was like, you know, guys, the game does not look this jittery here this is just the stream it's just making the computer work um really hard and i'm running it on like a, a one of those uh, what a kirby lake processors what what's the what's the processor i have the box is across it's an i7 crap uh can't see it, it, it it's a it's a fairly recent processor i've upgraded my computer in the past year um and uh, I'm, I'm running a, a decent, uh, a 1060 Ti with six gigs of RAM. So I'm making the minimum, I'm making the specs. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be having these performance problems on PC. So there's something going on here. And this is, this is the lead, as we say in the biz. Um, there are certain things you can do there are certain mistakes you can make as a as a brand that deals with the public there are other mistakes you can't make and it all depends on your brand right i can show up like a hot mess <laughs> because you guys are used to it that's part of my deal that's part of the reason you love me or part of the reason you hate me that's me if i get caught in a massive lie 
that would be bad because even when I'm wrong, I'm wrong honestly, right? CD Project Red had a reputation for being rough around the edges, for not being the most mature company in a lot of ways, for kind of being fuck ups. But they always seemed to put the consumer first, be it DRM, be it value for dollar, be it a lot of other things. If it is true that they deliberately, and, and they're, they're pretty much confessing they didn't show, um, th there, there was some deliberateness to not showing what the game looked like on PS4 because they knew it didn't look good on PS4. They, they, are, they are admitting that without admitting that. And that's why I'm so disappointed in the way they handled this. That is a violation of their brand. That, 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 that kicks people in the feels because it directly violates one of the things that the fans of CDPR <laughs> use to defend the company even when they screw up in other ways. And this is the silver lining of this whole mess. Um, you see, you see, I'm, I'm, I'm telling a story based on facts. This is how you journalism. Okay. Um, this shows that gamers don't have an agenda beyond quality. And I'm going to go back in time a little bit to the accusations that were leveled against gamers when they review bomb the last of us too, because people thought it was a hunk of hot garbage. Uh, you'll see it's still the review score for The Last of Us Part Two is still sitting at a paltry 5.7. Okay. When the meta score, it's a Metacritic must play, must play, must play, uh, sitting at a 93, 121 reviews, <laughs> user score, not so much. <gasps> Misogyny, homophobia, shit lords, disingenuous. Why do you hate women and all that is good? Right? That was the reaction. Well, if that was the reason for this response, we would expect to see a very different reaction in a game where you can customize the naked boobies, right? But eh, gamers got just as angry <laughs> at Cyberpunk 2077. I saw this. Okay, it's not as many user ratings, but this happened fast, man. This is like, ouch. Like, most people, uh, I'm, going, I'm going full ET, right? Like, I'm going full ET, like, Ouch! Like that—that's what I—that's what happened in my head when it says like ouch. A six point nine user score. The meta score is lower, <laughs> but a six point nine for a game with from a studio that has such passionate defenders. Gamers defend this company, the hilt. Ouch! And this is actually a good thing because. It shows that gamers do not really stand on ceremony when it comes to what they're going to be pissed off about. It's a pure reaction to that. They don't think through their outrage. Politically, I shouldn't say that as if, as if I'm not one of them. Because I, I admit, I had to really be careful. I kind of knee-jerked when I read that Paul Tassie comment. Um, because uh, I was like, what? And then I realized, okay, I didn't actually read what I thought I read there because I went triggered and I got really mad when I saw that, I admit. And this is where the professionalism kicks in. On Twitter, I was like, whoa, hold up. If true, thank God I said if true because I went back and read it and it's like, okay, they're not quite seeing this here. We need some clarification. And if anybody has clarification, please give it to me. But this is what the PS4 um user score is right now and hold on to your butts ouch ouch elliot i'll be right here ouch
Like, this, this is the scene where Elliot's getting better. We're losing E.T. and E.T.'s all right. And, like, and, and we're hoping that CDPR is going to fix the game. But right now, gamers are all like, Elliot crying over what he the spoilers for et if you haven't seen it but like elliot's crying on ed like no no you killed him you killed him and then you see his heart light and they unzip the bag and he's like elliot 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 and elliot goes ah, ha, ha. And ga that's what gamers are hoping we're gonna be like come february when these patches finally come out because right now right now this is not et's heart light this <laughs> <laughs> and I'm laughing because it's it to me it's a delightful form of savagery because it just shows it, it is it is evidence supporting what people said during the whole Last of Us 2 fiasco right that we're not doing it because she's female we're not doing it because we have some political agenda we're not doing this because we're mad that the women's are taking over video games or anything like that. Nothing like that. It's not because there's a trans character in it. It's not because they're lesbians. None of that. It's what the fuck was that? Right. And this provides evidence to say that this is correct. This gamers were telling the truth because this is savagery, <laughs> okay? These review scores. And there's no claims that this is misogyny. This is politically motivated. No, people just done pissed off, okay? This is, this is like attacking with prejudice. People are disappointed. And um, so this leads me to the viewer question that, again, won't be addressed on Feedback Friday. There's plenty of stuff specifically on cyberpunk to deal with on Friday. We are going to be unpacking this one for a while. So this is the, the holiday content. This leads in. What do you want people to know? If, if you're somebody that engages in these culture war fights, okay? Or even if you're somebody who just goes angry, 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 angry typing on this stuff, what is it? What gets you mad enough to touch the poop? I'm, I'm really, cause, cause there are definite lines and it may very much be different than from, from company to company, right? I know that when the whole Ubisoft sexual harassment scandal came out, I was too sad to be mad. Cause that, that was not like a game content thing. That was, oh wow, real people got hurt. And I happen to know some of them. I, I was just like, even thinking about it now, I get this sick feeling in my stomach, right? I, I was, you, you, you can see, like, I can't control my face. It was, it was just, clearly I'm still not over it. I'm having the bug stacks, bug snacks reaction, right? First time bug, right? Um, <laughs> I don't have much of a poker face, I'm sorry. But, um, you know, other things, Last of Us 2, made me blindingly don't use me as a fucking pawn why do you think i would like this hunk of shit i am offended by the implication that i am the the, the target for for this lesbian snuff porn you know with abby who isn't a lesbian would have been hotter if she was. Um, but, uh, you know, then, then it would have been like one of those 70s, like Wild Women of Wongo, Russ Meyer movie type things. Okay, there, there, there's something there. But that, like... You know, see, that's the fake disgust face. You saw the real disgust face before, right? I know why that made me angry. I am profoundly disappointed in CD Projekt Red. Um, and again, I am angry and I, I'm, I'm holding it back right now because I can't, I can't make that final connection for sure, but I'm like 90% sure shenanigans confirmed, right? And this is where I think a lot of the anger for The Last of Us 2 came from. And I think a lot of the anger surrounding cyberpunk is really deserved. When you are deliberately engaging in misleading marketing. That is a whole new level of not cool. 
it, it should just be undeniable that that's not cool. Okay. Um, there's no gray area there. If you're deliberately misleading people by omission, I would claim is a slightly less serious transgression than editing out Jesse and putting in Joel in marketing materials. Like that was some bullshit. Okay. Not going to lie. That was some bullshit. Um, but lies by omission are still lies. And if they knew the game was broken and so deliberately left out that footage, that's some bullshit. And it being slightly less bullshitty doesn't make it not bullshit, right? All right. I'm interested in your feedback. I'm interested in what makes you triggered and what makes you outraged when it comes to gaming. You know what's coming. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching.